Welcome to Chapter 5, Cumulative Distribution Functions and Probability. The video series hosted by me, Tim Smith, on the workbook of Quantitative Tools and Techniques in Marketing, 2nd Edition. We're going to begin by looking at what the Cumulative Distribution Function is. And I will abbreviate it as CDF, just to make my life easier. So the cumulative distribution function defines the probability of obtaining a measurement up to a point. We can use the cumulative distribution functions with both continuous and discrete frequency distributions. An example of the continuous distribution function that we'll be using is, of course, the normal distribution. Let us now take a look at Excel and using these functions. Okay, back in chapter one, we looked at the distribution function of female shoe sizes. I'm going to make this screen a little bit bigger. There we go. So here's the female shoe sizes. We have unknown, which we're pretty much not going to use. The uh, known shoe sizes, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. These are the frequency of responses to the question, what size shoe do you wear? We can now go ahead and calculate the probability of getting a particular response. So we're going to call this, uh, we're call this response probability. Now we're going to ignore the unknowns for the sake of calculating the cumulative distribution function since these are relatively unclassified. I'm also going to go ahead and wrap text. I'm going to wrap text in the entire front top row. There we have it. Nicely wrapped text. It'll make things look a little prettier. So to find the probability of response, I take the current response, number of responses to size 4, divide by the sum of all the responses, use the dollar signs where it belongs to hold certain cells constant. As I copy them around, copy, paste, and finally put in this into, into percent format. We can now calculate the cumulative response frequency or probability. Probability. There we go. Again, make this a little wider. There we have it. Now everything looks pretty. So I need to accumulate probability. I'm going to add one more decimal point to this. There we have it. So how many people, I'm accumulating probability, that's my cumulative response function here. For the size 4, I had 11 people respond, or 2.6 people respond. So up to size 4, I had 2.6 people respond. Size 5, I had 1.4% respond, and above that I had the other 2.6, or I had 1.4 plus what I had above. I can simply take this and add it to the cell above. I can copy and paste this all the way down. We're seeing the cumulative probability increasing until finally I hit 100%. At 100%, size 12, that's the maximum shoe size we asked about, and that, that covers our entire group. Let's go ahead and plot this so we'll see what a cumulative distribution function looks like. I'm going to insert a bar chart. With discrete functions, it's best to use bar charts. I'm sorry, column charts. There we have it, column chart. Select my data, add series name, cumulative distribution function, series values. There we have it, OK. I'm going to choose the shoe size here, OK, OK. I'm going to go ahead and quickly format this using the Excel Quick tools. Just have to find it, the right one. I think this one will do the trick. Yeah, there we have it. So let's go ahead and title this axis, shoe size, and title this axis, cumulative distribution function. And title this, Overall, the female shoe size. Now, notice how 
without the little uh, borders on these bars, it's hard to tell where one begins and the next one ends. So I'm going to go ahead and add the borders. Format data series, border, solid, something nice and light like that. Close. It's much easier to read. Then we have our cumulative distribution. We have also called this cumulative probability as it is stated in the book. That is an example of a cumulative distribution function. Very few people say that 4 at 5, this is the total probability, 4% of the people say 5 or lower. 21% of the people here, 21% say size 6 or lower. 50% of the people say a size 7 or lower. It's 7 is clearly the median, because 50% of people say 7 or lower, that implies that 50% say 7 or higher. 76% uh, here, there, say a size 8 or lower. 91% say 9 or lower. 99.8% uh, say 11 or lower. And 100% say 12 or lower. No one said a higher shoe size. This is an example of a discrete distribution function. Notice to calculate the cumulative response probability, all I did was take my current one, my first one, and then keep moving up. So I'm adding it as I move up. I'm increasing my overall response. I'm accumulating the new with what I had up to it. So here, I'm accumulating the new plus what I had up to it. That's an example of a discrete distribution function. Now let's look at a continuous one. On a blank sheet, I'm going to type in a few features, such as the mean and the standard deviation. There we go. And I'll choose some different means. I'll choose the mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5 for the first one. Now we'll take our measurement. And here will be our CD, uh, our cumulative distribution function. We'll consider measurements starting at 0, going all the way up to 100. So add 1 to the 1 above it, copy, and paste. Oops, there we have it. Now to help me navigate Excel a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and freeze my panes again. View. Freeze panes, or freeze it this way. There we have it. Now, for the normal, for a normal probability curve, we can simply use that norm dist function again. Here's the point of interest: our x, comma, mean of 50, comma, standard deviation of 5, comma, cumulative. This time we're looking at the cumulative distribution function, so I'm going to say true. There we have it. Some very small, very un, very unlikely the response was five was zero or lower if the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is five. If I put in some few dollar signs and hold some cells constant from row to row where they belong, specifically the mean and the standard deviation, I can copy and paste this all the way down. Now let's take a look at this. Starts out very small. Some number times e to the negative 24. I'm sorry, times 10 to the negative 24. So it's very unlikely people say zero. Starts getting bigger. Around uh, 50, I have 0.5. Notice how it just starts getting bigger. It's hard to read just a tablet of numbers. So let's instead plot this. I'm going to plot this since so it's a continuous function with a line plot. So I'm going to insert a line plot, select my data, add series name, cumulative distribution function, values, that's all of them. Okay, change the uh, axis labels to actually what I'm using. There we have it. Okay, and there's our cumulative distribution function for a normal curve. Notice it goes from 0 to 1.2, but all of the answers lie between 0 and 1. I'm going to go ahead and format my axis a little bit. Specifically, I'm going to set the maximum fixed. I'm oh, sorry, not the minimum. 
the maximum fixed at 1. There we have it. Let's go ahead and add in a few more uh, labels. For instance, the uh, axis labels, vertical. There we have it. I don't like that format. It just looks weird. The rotated works better, so I'm going to call this probability. probability. And uh, we'll also insert the x-axis. Horizontal, down below, call this the measurement. Uh, this goes 0, 6, 12. That's kind of a weird way to count, so I'm going to change this as well. Format that axis. I'm going to have it go up by fives. Now we have it going up by fives. I could have also had it go up by tens as it is in the book. I'm going to select the axis, format that axis, and have it go up by tens. Okay. Let's change the name to reflect what we're plotting fully. Cumulative. Distribution function mean mean equals fifty standard deviation equals five. And uh, let's make this into beautiful Greek letters again. Home change this into symbol. I'm just going to start typing in symbol. There it appears symbol and uh, change this also into symbol. Recently used symbol. So there's my cumulative distribution function where the mean is 50 and the standard deviation is 5. Let's get rid of that so we don't need the legend because we're only plotting one. So I'm going to remove that. Let's take a look at this before we start playing around a little bit. With our cumulative distribution function, mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5, we find that very, it's very unlikely to find a measurement in 0. It's, by the time we get to 100, we've hit 100% probability. That makes sense. If I wanted to change this to, say, percentage, rather than go to 0 to 1, I can simply select this entire axis and watch. I'm going to change it so it reads percentage. Now it says percentage right there. So 0% of the people have a measurement of 0, 10, 20, 30. It isn't until you get to 40 that you find a possibility. People will say, will give a response of any significant chance. At 50, which is the mean, the probability of finding a response at 50 or lower is, well, 50%. Probability of finding a response at 50 or above is also 50% because 50 is the mean. At around 60, you've covered almost all. That's about two standard deviations, so that's two sigma. And at 70, you've definitely covered almost all possible categories in this, uh, in this measurement, all possible responses. So there's our mean, and there's our standard deviation of our metrics. Watch what happens as I change my, my mean like to 35. Now it goes from 0 to 1 at an earlier measurement. To make it clear where things are going, I'm going to go ahead and add in my, my, uh, my grid lines for my horizontal. Nope, vertical. There we go, major. Oops, that's too hard to read. I'll leave them out. Let's try to change to something else, like 75. See how it just moves around. All it is is moving where it goes from 0 to 1 as I move the mean. Let's move it at 10. See? It's at 1 before you even get to 20. So here we go. 20, 30. Whoops. I'll move it all the way up to 50. So we're back at 50. Now let's play with the standard deviation. This is 5. And it seems to go between 0 and 1 in the range of, you know, between 40 and 60. Well, with the standard deviation of 5, 2 times 5 is 10. So 2 standard deviations is 10. 10 below 50 is 40. 
10 above 50 is 60. We see almost all of the movement in our cumulative distribution function happens between 40 and 60. Let's see what happens if I make this wider, a larger standard deviation. It gets more, more space in there. Now 50 is still my mean, but 2 times 10 is a 20. So 50 less 20 is 30. And you see it goes between 30. All of the motion in my cumulative distribution function lies in the range of 30 up to about 70. If I make it even wider, like say 25, it starts to get very slowly sloped. By the time I choose something very large, like 50, you're just going to see something that, well, it's hard to see the curve at all with this range from 0 to 100. So let's put it back to 5. If you want to see something go really sharp, just choose 1. Now it's almost like a delta function. It just goes from 0 to 1 right there. Those are examples of cumulative distribution functions. <laughs> With the discrete functions, I'm going to go back to female shoe size, we had to simply calculate it by adding things up. With our continuous function, we can use the normal, we can use the function in Excel. Specifically for normal, dis, for normal distributions, the norm disk function will give you the cumulative distribution function with the last argument as true. Notice that the question for norm disk says x mean standard deviation cumulative. What we're doing is saying for this last argument cumulative, the answer is yes or true. I do want the cumulative distribution function. And there we have it. Nicely plotted. The next thing I want to point out about this cumulative distribution function is the shape overall seems to have a look of an S-curve. This S-curve is seen in many different markets. It, something very similar to this S-curve is seen specifically for product launches of new products as they go from no market saturation to being adapted to fully market, to full market saturation. 